Um, are you guys familiar with um, the difference between iframes and keyframes in compressed video? I, I'm not. I'm not either. Okay, great. I'll give you a very kind of high level explanation and then, and then I'll use this example um, to hopefully kind of bring that together to show you what, what's going on. So in the primary way that data is compressed these days, the purpose of compression is to reduce the storage size on the device. Um, okay. If we had unlimited storage, there'd be no reason to do compression. The only reason really is to make it so we can store 30 days worth of video recording eight cameras all, you know, 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So to do that, they have to compress the data. And one of the formats of compression is to look at these little blocks here. If I zoom in, you can kind of distinguish these blocks of data. Right. Yep. Those are what are called macro blocks. They're basically blocks of a group of pixels together. And right. in the area of the license plate, we can see that the blocks are very heavily compressed and there's nothing that we can really make out right there. But this kind of frame is what's called a P frame or a predictive frame. And we can actually see that right here in my timeline that it's identifying this as a P frame. Uh -huh. And there are other kinds of frames. If I go forward here, notice what happens when I get to an I frame, like this frame right here. We can actually see a little bit more detail here in the license plate. Do you see that? Yeah. Five something something PR something. Yeah, and if I go back a frame, look at the P frame now, and look how bad it is, and let's go forward a frame, and it kind of just pops in a little bit right there. Yeah. So very generally, our I frames are going to have lower compression than our P frames do. Hmm. It, the reason for that is the P frames are basically copying data that haven't changed from previous images, and so it ends up reducing the quality quite a bit. So what I'm going to use here is this, this basic understanding that iframes are generally better. And I'm going to extract out just my iframes. Then as another step to this, I'm going to take those iframes and I'm going to get the average pixel value in the area of my license plate. So basically I'm going to grab iframe, iframe, iframe all the way through this timeline. I'm going to stack them up on top of each other and I'm going to get the average pixel value. That can be done on my workflow tab very easily. So let's introduce some additional concepts now into our workflow tab. Um, we've talked about output nodes already and how we can connect files to those to convert them to that format. But we also have various filters and advanced processes that allow me to process this file in a bunch of really cool ways. Let's start by applying a filter to resize my file. A processing node can kind of float around here in my workflow tab area, but it works the same way as an output node does. You can simply click on the input file connect the dots, and now I've got my file getting resized. When I open up the settings here, I can actually see a preview of what this looks like, and I can change the size of this. So I'd like to double my size, just to double up the, the, all the pixels. And I can do some math in my head to multiply 352 by, by times two, or I can just type in times two. We make it really easy for you. You can just write math directly into here. So now I've got a twice the size image. And now what I'm going to do here is extract out just those iframes, just those frames that I really want. Um, and that's an advanced process here called extract frames. Again, connect up the dots. And inside my extract frames node, I can choose what kinds of frames that I want. And like I've been saying here, we're gonna, in this example, just grab out those iframes, those higher quality images. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. The very last step now is to do another advanced process to average the frames. So this is now what the workflow looks like. It's going to resize times two, it's going to extract out the iframes, and now I'm gonna get the average pixel value of all the images. Now you might notice something a bit, a bit weird here. If I go back to my interrogate tab, the camera is moving, right? We've got a lot of motion as the images are bouncing around and moving. So what's going to happen if I extract out those iframes and average them? One, one frame will be, you know, the license plate will be over here. The next frame, it'll be over here. The next frame will be over here. And when we average that, we'll get a big blur of data. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So we need to do another step here, which is to align all the images so the license plate kind of stacks up in the same area. To do that, I'm going to open up my frame average output and simply check this align images checkbox. That's it. So now my workflow is done. It is resizing times two, extracting iframes, aligning the images and averaging them. 
And then just a couple more seconds here, we'll see the results pop in and it's gonna be significantly better than our original input file. So you can see all the frames kind of stacked up and when I zoom in, there's our plate. Wow. So Andrew, if you were doing this in a traditional method, how long would this workflow typically take? And how much, you know, oh. I guess it would only be able to be done by a video analyst, right? I mean, to go through these kind of steps in a kind of more traditional way. Yeah, in the in the traditional way, um, you'd be doing this manually um, and probably not even getting the same results. Um, but you you could be, you know, manually visually trying to find where the iframes are. You could manually extract those or take screenshots. You could try to bring it into Photoshop and manually adjust them and then run some math on it to align or to average those images. But I mean, we're talking about hour, hours of work. Um, what, I just did, what I just did there in Input Ace, I was multitasking and talking through and I'm done. Um, not to mention the fact that all of these workflows that we build in the program, you can save and reuse by simply coming up to your workflow actions dropdown and choosing save. So if I were to call this, um, let's call it like a line license plate, I now have a saved workflow and I can export that workflow if I choose to, to archive that with my case, which is helpful in situations where we are going to be testifying a year later maybe and we want to turn over our results to the other side to make sure that they can reproduce it. Um, mm -hmm. Or I need it for my own notes to make sure that I know how to reproduce it. I can export that workflow out and then anytime that I come back into the input ace application, we now have all of our saved workflows are all right here. So I can reopen anything that I want and it will show me all my various workflows.